Swimming Pool Steve here with another review of uh, pool equipment installations. Um, this pool that we're standing at here is interesting in that upon arrival it was uh, apparent that there's quite a bit of staining in the pool. The white uh, steps for this vinyl liner pool have been stained a brown-orange color. Uh, the initial impression was that maybe the heater core is rotting out and then having traveled over here to the equipment room the heater has been completely decommissioned, disconnected water side eliminated and then bypassed completely. What is significant about that is, actually you know what, we'll get to that in a minute because it's on the return side so we'll just start here with the suction line. So we've got two inch and a half suction lines here into street elbows, into single union ball valves, into sweep elbows, into a T, into a male adapter. There's an awful lot of flow restriction here. Now the way to solve this or make this as good as possible would have been to replace the street elbows with sweep elbows here. A street elbow is approximately four times of the flow restriction of a sweep elbow. And I would have preferred to see a longer straight run into the pump here just to, to uh, reduce on the amount of friction loss and turbulence that the uh, water will be experiencing as it enters this pump. From the pump we go up into the sand filter here. It looks to be about 20 inches, 22, maybe about uh, 250 pounds of sand. It's a fairly small pool so that's decent. Uh, the spa flex, the flexible PVC has been clamped in place which again that's not what this is made for. This is made for priming and glue applications like we see out the back side here. Uh, so then down, okay there we go so we're running out to a new heater here that's replacing that old one that's been Repl or that's been failed now or that has failed. Okay, so this new heater that's been added has some very specific benefits. Number one, it's got a check valve to prevent the water from the salt water chlorinator from tracking backwards. We'll talk about that more in a second. What is super interesting here is that this sacrificial anode has been added to help mitigate the damaging effects of galvanic corrosion in the pool. Uh, basically this zinc deteriorates as opposed to other metals in the pool. Um, this one's not finished being installed. It's been connected to this bonding lug, but this bonding lug still needs to have a number six bare copper wire run to it from the uh, main house electrical panel. But this is a good start. If you've seen my videos, you know that a check valve and a sacrificial anode make me very happy. Um, the one thing I don't like here is that both of these connections have been made with street elbows. I mean, obviously there's nothing in our way at all here. We could have used anything at all, so I, uh, there's no reason to add extra flow restriction in where it's not needed. So coming back from the, that new heater, we'll take a look at where the old heater connected, which, which was right here. And what happened is this, this Zodiac salt cell, Zodiac requiring 4,000 parts per million on average for their salt system, I guarantee you that there was no check valve in between this salt cell and this heater, and that's absolutely what killed this heater, and the, the rotting heater the metals dete deteriorating in this heater were what has caused the staining in the pool. It's evident on the back side of the, uh, the white plastic uh, return flanges as well as the uh, white steps that are in the pool. They've all stained orange so it, they'll require chemical treatment to resolve that, that discoloring and you can even see the discoloring down here. And that discoloration again that you're seeing is a result of the internals on this heater that have rotted out. Uh, so on the return side manifold again we've got two street elbows and two a single union ball valve on one side and then just the stairs uh, straight return on the other side. So again uh, pretty serious flow restriction there with the two street elbows that don't need to be there and uh, the check valve that wasn't here that caused this heater to fail. Now as you saw the new one has that so they, they shouldn't experience this problem again. Um, just to, goes to show you know a $75 check valve or a $2,000 heater which one do you want to replace?